With this video, we're going to move into unit two, which is about parallelizing the Y86 in a particular way called pipeline. Now we're going to do this parallelization by making some observations about the implementation that we've spent a lot of time talking about. And the key observation that I hope you noticed is that we only ever go to memory to read instructions during the fetch stage. We only read the register file in the decode stage. We only use the ALU in the execute stage, and we only read and write to memory in the memory stage. And then we only write to memory in the right, I'm sorry, write to the register file in the write back stage. So what this means is that while we're using our circuit, right? So for any instruction, this, you know, we sort of read something into the instruction register and then we hold it there and it's called latching it into a register. And we hold those values there and then we let the signals flow throughout all the circuits and make their way through all these stages, even though at any one point in time, we only really need one part of the hardware. So we have all this hardware at our disposal and what we're doing is we're actually taking a long time to execute a single instruction by waiting for the signals to flow while much of the hardware is remaining idle. And so the question that we want to ask is, gosh, is there a better way that we could use all that hardware? And so to demonstrate how we might do that, I'm going to play a short video for you. So I'd like to introduce you to some friends of mine called the Little Ponies. And we're going to start with a sequential implementation of making pies with little ponies. So we have one little pony on the assembly line. And the same pony is going to like stamp out the crust and then fill the crust and then put the top crust on. And so you'll notice that it, it took us a while to make a pie. That's kind of how our sequential processor is running now. But it turns out little ponies like pies and they would like more pies. So notice how pony called all the little pony friends. And the question is, what if each friend did a different stage of the pipeline? Now mapping this back to our processor, you could imagine that one of the ponies is fetching, another is decoding, another is executing, and that time they still, only one of them did anything at one time. But now they have an idea. What if they could do them at the same time? So now we have many pies coming down. One pony is doing all the stamping. The next pony is doing the filling. And the next pony is putting the top on. Now you may have noticed that our ponies ran into some problems. And it turns out that without careful design, our computers can also run into problems when we try to introduce pipelining. So. Let's go back to our slides. And that was your introduction to pipelining via ponies. But let's see what it means when we look at it from a point of view of the implementation. So here was the circuit diagram that we had. And what I'd like to do, and we'll see how well this works, I'm going to try to annotate the slide by drawing on it. And this is always just a little exciting. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna draw and we will draw the squiggly line. So what we want to do is we want to say, well, there's this part of the processor that really is all about fetching instructions, and it's right there. There's another part that's really all about decoding the instruction and sort of reading from the register file. There's another part that's all about using the ALU, including setting those condition codes. There's another part that's all about writing to memory. Ooh, that was bad. And then there's finally the part in the register file where we're going to write. So the question is, can we rearrange our hardware in such a way that we can actually execute this in stages? Now, if we had more space, let's see, I think I need to erase everything to make all that annotation go away. So let's clear all the drawings, great. And now let's go to our next slide. So we've talked about these five stages and you'll notice that I carefully excluded P1 
PC update. And the reason is that if we go back to this slide, what you'll see is that the program counter is in fact a register, but computation of the next PC is really just a logic block. And so it turns out that once these signals flow into the next PC, we can sort of wait and just latch them into the program counter and then go ahead and fetch an instruction. So we talked about the instructions in six stages previously so that we could really focus on exactly how we update the PC. But in this implementation, as we move to pipelining, we're really gonna roll that into computing the value that gets latched into the program counter. So we have a five stage model. And because I need somewhere to hold the signal that each stage is going to work on, what I'm gonna do is introduce registers between each stage. And these registers are called pipeline registers. Now it turns out adding those registers is going to incur a performance overhead. So it takes time to get the signal and latch it into the register. But what that's going to enable us to do is execute multiple instructions in parallel. So there's going to be a trade-off and one of the things we'll do in this unit is spend some time talking about that trade-off. Let's make this a little more concrete and go from a sequential implementation to a pipeline implementation. In our sequential implementation, what we're really doing here, right, is we execute a single instruction through all the st stages, and then we go to the next instruction and we execute it. The way I want you to start visualizing execution in a pipeline processor is that we're going to treat each row in this picture as a separate instruction and time is going to march along from left to right. So what that means is each of these rows is an instruction that's going to execute across, but while the first instruction is doing its decode, so the first instruction is saying I need to read the register file, but while it's reading the register file, there's an instruction behind it that is reading an instruction from memory. When we go to the next phase, well, that instruction that started first already read from the register file, so now it's gonna go into the execute phase. Meanwhile, the instruction right behind it, now it can do decode, and the one behind that can do fetch. So in theory, at any one time, you can have five different instructions executing at the same time on the hardware. So as I mentioned before, there are some pluses and minuses here. This uses your hardware much more efficiently because we're parallelizing and using all the units at the same time. And an entire collection of instructions is going to finish more quickly. And we'll get some practice in class doing that. But each individual instruction actually is gonna take a little bit longer because we've introduced those pipeline registers. Now, if you don't have your pipeline balanced and some stages take a long time and some stages are really short, then you can end up with wasted time again, right? So let's say that it takes one nanosecond to read a register and a thousand nanoseconds to run the ALU. Then your instruction that is in the decode phase of trying to read the registers is waiting for 999 nanoseconds while the ALU finishes. So one of the games we want to play here is to balance the pipeline stages so they're all about the same length of time. Now, there's one other really tricky part that we saw in the My Little Pony video, which is that sometimes you don't necessarily have the right information at exactly the right time. And that will be the topic of several classes and pre-class videos that we'll work through. <laughs>